What is up YouTube and welcome back to my channel. dying it's not covid it's a sinus infection today i originally so i was in the process of editing this video and literally everything deleted gone donezo and except for like my clips for my intros and beginning and i was like what the heck because i filmed it all yesterday and i was like i'm gonna get it out today i'm gonna have everything all set Nope. So, here we are. <laughs> okay, so today I am going to talk with you about five reasons you may not be seeing results. There may be more than five reasons, but I don't know. It sounded like more catchy. Five reasons. Five reasons. <laughs> and there are a ton of reasons why you may or may not be seeing results, but I'm just going to include what I know from my own personal experience. Again, to preface, I am not a professional. I am not a licensed professional. So any of my advice, comments, or anything about fitness, health, the journey, it's stuff that I have learned based on my own personal experience and my own journey. I just want to say that so no one asks me in the comments like, that makes no sense that didn't work for me because again what works for me might not work for you what I've learned ways that have held me back from results may not hold you back all right so number one I think is a very common thing this actually is just like common knowledge it's common sense but I feel like I do have to say it because if you are trying to lose weight you do have to be in a calorie deficit and oftentimes I feel like there is such a misconception with how we view our calorie intake versus working out and um, I know a lot of people and I used to think this way too is that oh like I'm going to work out so I can eat this food or I ate this food so I have to work out and it's like the calorie exchange doesn't really work that way um, so that's just a mindset thing that needs to nix it go to the curb go off if you are trying to lose weight that is what you are going to need to be in now now to follow up with that calorie deficit does not mean 1200 calories I talked about this in my last video 1200 calories is not a sustainable amount and I know it sounds like so much and I was convinced like 1200 calories is the magic number that's what everyone feeds you as a magic number but no you can still eat 1700 to 2000 calories and so achieve your weight loss goal in the back of my mind still to this day is 1200 calories it's a very hard thing to break it's a very it's just so toxic so we need to ditch that behind that is going to be the number one reason though that you may not be seeing results is especially if your mindset is like oh i I'm going to work out so I can eat this whole box of pizza later. You're not going to be seeing the results because you're just balancing it out. I'm not saying you can't work out and go have a, a slice, two, three of pizza. Sure, go ahead. Everything is fine, just in moderation. So be mindful of that. Okay, next is strenuous strenuously focusing on cardio. I know during my first 
weight loss journey. If you've seen any of those videos, you guys know I obsessed over cardio. That was all I did. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing, obviously. I love cardio, I still run six, sometimes seven days a week. I've implemented more rest into my schedule, which is my next point. But you can achieve your weight loss goals if you lift. And there are other forms of cardio you don't have to run five days a week to see results in that. You can just go for walks, get your steps in. Don't underestimate the power of lists, which is low intensity. Um, there is a lot of power behind using that as a tool. I have found using it has actually boosted my progress up and so has high intensity training. This could be your HIIT workouts. Um, for those that don't know, I do sprints on the treadmill and I'm back on those and that really boosts my progress in comparison to running almost five miles a day. I see more progress doing sprints um, because it just, it boosts your heart rate, boosts your metabolism very good now you don't have to again obsess over doing those hit workouts you can lift and burn a ton of calories and still lose weight which is another thing is that weight lifting will not make you bulky I know it's a very big thing why a lot of women do not lift because they don't want to be bulky. Do I look, do I look, do I look bulky to you? I have a broader chest, but do I look bulky like a bodybuilder? No, look, and then when I flex, hello. Hello, how you doing? Let the muscles do the talking. <laughs> but I'm not bulky. Um, the only way you're going to actually seriously bulk up is if you are in a bulk, which is eating in a calorie surplus plus intense, heavy training. So, capiche? On top of, like I said, the lower intensity, don't underestimate the power of walks and don't underestimate the power of rest. Rest in this process is just as important. I used to be someone that focused so hard on working out. I would, I think my first weight loss journey or at some point, I was so scared of falling off track that I went to the gym seven days a week, sometimes twice a day. And all I was really doing was running. I still was very inexperienced with weightlifting and didn't know where to start or what to do and didn't even try. And so I was just, again, obsessing over cardio and I was just in there consistently and I was wondering why I still wasn't seeing results. Like, obviously I was still making progress because you can't just like work out that much and like not see some sort of weight loss being in a calorie deficit as well as burning that much just so burnt out i was unable to push myself even more the next time i worked out and i find that is like huge if you want to make progress with that being said the next one i think for I think I didn't really count if you want to see results you are going to have to start getting out of your comfort zone and doing different workouts pushing your strength lifting heavier um, it's going to be uncomfortable and sometimes painful you're gonna be like why did I sign up for this I'm in pain but like it's the good kind of pain that's gonna get you those muscle gains and that progress switching up your training is definitely an important part of the process as well. I remember always going in same weight, same workouts, and over time your muscle groups are, your body is just used to that and it's just gonna go through the motions. You need to be able to feel that resistance and if your body is like adjusting and stops feeling that resistance, you're just gonna, not that you're going to necessarily lose progress, but you're just going to stay stuck in that same 
that same weight limit. You're not going to be able to exceed it unless you push it, you know? And that's where the rest also comes into play is that to be able to have the energy and allow those muscles to repair itself that is when you're going to see even more improvement in your strength you know not giving my body rest i couldn't push my strength because i was so burnt out i was constantly tired i lacked energy i couldn't run faster because my body was already used to this amount of miles at this amount of pace so i just stuck to that because my body didn't have the energy to push itself okay but yes on top of pushing um, your strength you're also going to want to switch up the types of exercises you do of course there are your staples you know your shoulder press your chest press um your deadlifts squats stuff like that those are something you are going to um implement every workout and then progress that with building your strength there are a lot of times like i also do the same workout routine ish and push my strength through that adding reps adding sets adding weights whatever the case may be so i'm still making progress but then there are certain exercises that your body gets used to and you can't necessarily i don't want to say you can't push yourself enough in them but it's time to like switch it up and move your body a different way so then you really do feel it i started doing that more when i train my hamstrings and start implementing like more plates and like stepping on those and using those as i'm doing my deadlifts and stuff like that um there are so many different variations and by implementing those little things you can engage those muscles in an entire entirely different way and then you notice more progress and you're gonna work those muscles differently and you're just going to see better results that way in terms of strength in terms of definition and in terms of like holy freak i can do this but yes if you are you know trying to lose weight calorie deficit of course but you know some people are trying to gain weight so you're obviously going to eat more but in order to really see results um you're going to have to start fueling your muscles properly and that comes with eating highly nutritious foods and i'm not saying like you can't enjoy your favorite foods that's not what i'm saying at all but you have to start getting into this mindset of like in order to see the results you want you're going to need to fuel your muscles and give it the protein and the fruits and vegetables and carbs that it needs food is an energy source but if you are using those processed foods you're going to feel sluggish in the gym you're going to be bloated you're not going to want to push yourself as hard for talking to abs um because you know i actually never had abs and now we do I'm a, little, I'm a little shook i mean obviously everyone has abs but i mean defined abs okay on my first fitness journey i actually um trained core every single day every single day um <laughs> the same variation too so never really switched it up so i guess they weren't as strong at the same time i wasn't eating enough i didn't fuel those muscles properly and I saw zero definition now I maybe train them twice a week um sometimes three because you do have to strengthen them in order for them to show obviously and abs are your body fat percentage um so take that in mind they really are made in the kitchen so if you want a six pack in your training core obsessively but not fueling your body you're not really going to um see them <laughs> at least that's what i found i train them twice a week and fuel my body properly and then like once i eat too the, like you have to understand they're a muscle so once i eat too they're they pop out they get strong so eat right have some made in the kitchen fuel your body with nutritious foods and you'll notice results 
like I said, do not underestimate. Like the biggest one for me was underestimating the power of rest. I am still very active. I'm back on my springs, like I said. I am still training my body pretty hard, but if I want to keep my body moving, I just go for walks or I take my longboard out. Um, but Sundays mainly are my dedicated active rest days to where I do go on long walks or do yoga or something. You can still move your body in not as high intensity, like and make progress. Um, you need time for your muscles to rebuild so you can go in bigger and better than before. Also, I know this is like also common sense, but do not underestimate the power of water. Don't. Because I feel like we all say like, oh, drink water, drink water. No, but like seriously, drink water. It helps with your stamina, with your endurance, with building muscle because you are hydrating those muscles and you are also fueling your muscles with water. There are nutrients in water, just so you're aware. I don't know if you're aware, but there are. So drink your water. Water also energizes the crap out of you. If you didn't know, water will wake you up. I promise. I didn't believe it at first, but once I started drinking water, but I think that's it. I think I tackled everything. Uh, let me know if you feel like I missed anything down in the comments. But with that being said, don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'll catch y'all in the next one.